Hello and welcome back. We are now moving on to talk about recruiting of project managers and what exactly David would look for as a hiring manager. So David, tell us, when you hire these great folks who work with you, what exactly are you looking for and how does the interview kind of take place? Great question, Phil. I think, first of all, hiring is a very important process for any manager and even more so in project management because your project managers that you're hiring, project leaders, they're going to be leading other projects. So mm -hmm. it's very key that they have a number of key skills. So one of the things that I look for in an interviewing process is their communication skills, how concise they are to get their point, what kind of questions they ask, mm -hmm. what's their thought process behind it, what they did. And so a lot of times when I interview a, a project manager for a position, I get several very crisp answers about the tools they use. <laughs> and that's important because they do have to understand their craft. Mm -hmm. But when I press a little bit more about what results and what was the business value that you got in determining uh, the, what you, what the outcomes for their project, a lot of times they stumble with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I finished on budget. I made sure there wasn't scope creep. <laughs> and those are, and I made sure that, that we followed a schedule. Okay, triple constraints, great. And that's important. But well, how did you, what did you measure? What were your key metrics? Mm. What would, where did you start? Where did you end? You know, how did you create value with your customer? So I think that's very important. That's one of the things I look for. In addition to that, I also want to look about how they handle how they facilitate, how they go about facilitating a meeting. So often mm -hmm. when you lead, whether it's virtual or in a room, you're facilitating a group and of individuals in different disciplines, whether it be technology, whether it be your testers, your requirement, your people doing requirements. Mm -hmm. You are really trying to work that team. It's almost mm -hmm. like an orchestra conductor, mm -hmm. the way my analogy yeah. is a lot of PMs are really orchestra conductors where mm -hmm. You know, you can play a different instrument. You may not be able to every instrument in your orchestra, but you have to use the right instrument at the right time mm -hmm. with the right involvement mm -hmm. to make sure that that music really sounds mm -hmm. really great. Absolutely. It's a good analogy to use. Mm. So from your experience, just to shift gears here, assume a project manager comes on board with you. How do you see them evolving and fitting into the position? Do you see that going through some sort of cycle, life cycle, or do you find out that the great ones who were great at the interview are typically just great off the bat, or is there some molding that still takes place? I think there's always molding, Phil, that takes place. I think you have to, first of all, look at the skill level that you hired for that position. But I think there are, in that initial 90 days, 120 days, you know, you want to make sure you're close as a manager, coaching, listening in on the meetings or facilitation. Mm -hmm. And so you're always kind of getting a feel of where they're at, their skill level, and you're providing uh, feedback. I think that the, 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 the thing that I try to do with, with the individuals that I've hired is I try to give them the size of a project that they can get their feet wet, okay. but it's not going to overwhelm them at first mm -hmm. and see how they do. And then from there... I try to coach them on different things like, like I said earlier, like what, su what does success look like in this project? Okay. Who do you need to involve? Because to me, a lot of times you have your core team, but you also have those people that are not in your core team. Okay. Have you thought about that process? Hmm. Have you really defined clear and understandable goals? Um, extremely important. And then I think along the way, you're always providing little nuggets. Hmm. You know, for instance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're holding meetings, especially even virtual, is it? do you have crickets after 15 <laughs> minutes? Do you have people not showing up for your meetings? Mm -hmm. You know, you, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of nuggets out there to look and provide you feedback right. if you're looking at the right areas. Absolutely. So I try to help coach that way so they can understand when the things are going well mm -hmm. and then maybe things that need to improve, kind of a self-assessment along, along the way. You bring up a really good point, you know, speaking about coaching, you talked about 90 to 120 days coaching them, you know, in various areas, which is really big. And I see this as being an important point because a lot of management 
from organizations where PMPs are hired think that they can get a PMP off the street that is a cookie cutter fit for a position. But that really isn't the case in all honesty, is it? No. And the other thing is, even for the people that are most experienced PMs, the my most successful PMs, mm. I still will drop in on their meetings every once in a while. I don't want to mm. micromanage, I never do, but I want to provide constant coaching. And one of the ways to do that isn't just asking your customer at a certain point in time, how's the project going? Yes, you yeah. want to do that. But just also listening to how they're doing things, whether communications mm. or some things you might add. And I, and I really have gotten a lot of feedback that my team always appreciates the constant coaching mm. that they get. And also it makes it easier when I deal with the same customer and they have certain questions because I'm kind of up to speed to a certain degree on what's going on with the project. Mm. I think you really gave some good insights as far as you know, what you would look for as a hiring manager. So you talked about key skills, you talked about concise communications, questions, thought process, crisp answers, and, and that's absolutely fantastic. Can you give us a rough idea you know, for these PMs who are going to be attending similar interviews? Just give us a rough idea of some of the key questions, you know, the deal maker, deal breaker type questions. For one, of the, one of the basic questions I, want, I ask is, why should I hire you for the position? Mm. You know, in other words, they should be able to sell themselves in a very concise manner. So that's one of the first questions I would ask. Um, I would also ask about how, how would they facilitate a meeting. I may give them an example, or I may let them just talk to me about an example, but how they go facilitate it. And then I would ask questions off of there. Mm. How, do you meet, get, how do you get engagement of the whole group? Mm. What happens if you have someone that is pro constantly providing um, some negativity? How do you handle that conflict? How do you channel? What would be your first course of action? So a lot of times I'll ask a general question, but then I'll ask for more specifics. Okay. How do you set up, how do you, how do you know when you are successful? Mm. Um, how would you, you know, how do you know that when you're done, a project has this beginning mm -hmm. and an end. How do you, where, <laughs> when do you know a project's done? How do you determine that? Um, so, and I also think about the terms of, of, of what's most important in being a successful project manager. Okay. And that really tells me a lot because what I'm looking for is someone that has a balance between what I consider to be the art and science of project management. Mm, mm -hmm. The science is clearly, you know, the tools and how to utilize the tools, whether it's a risk mitigation uh, plan or how mm. to do a RACI or whatever, or just what scope creep is and how do you, how do you establish a baseline uh, of a schedule. Mm. Those are all critical points in using your toolbox. And so I want to hear some of that. Gotcha. But I also want to hear the what I call the art. Mm -hmm. How do you manage conflict? Mm -hmm. How do you communicate? What things go into your communication thought process? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, that's, those are some of the things that I look at. Fantastic. Hey, I hope you've been enjoying this interview because I've already got almost two pages of notes. This is how I learn. I learn from people who are there in the thick of it, really doing project management really doing leadership. So this has been really great, David. Thank you very much. When we come back, we're going to move on to talk about project management as an art and a science. When we come back, see you in a few minutes.